What's going on, family? I'm Sean. And today we're going to go ahead and talk about what's going on with energy prices and why I believe that you're going to be paying and suffering at the pump all the way until 2023. So if you didn't know, now you know I'm completely uninterested and unqualified with providing you with social, financial, legal, or life advice. I'm going to share some articles with you. We're going to get into it real quick. So first, everybody knows everybody's been going to the, to the gas station and suffering. So right now, currently in the United States, the average for regular fuel is $4.59. Uh, for a gallon of diesel, and we're currently sitting at $5.56. Look at that gap from a year ago. For diesel, it was went from $3.17 a year ago to $5.56. For regular fuel, $4.59, and it used to be $3.04. A lot of people don't understand what they're paying for when they pay for a gallon of gas. When you go, this is from the United States Energy Information Administration's website. They release a weekly gasoline report. So currently, when you when when you're going to the gas station, you pay for that gallon of gas. 60% of what you pay for is the current price of crude oil. 17% is the refining costs that go into to making that available to you. 11% of the cost is for distribution and marketing. And 12% of what you're paying for is due to your local taxes. Now, the EIA also does a short-term energy outlook. I spoke about this in one of my earlier videos. But currently, they expect that Brent prices will average $107 per barrel in the second quarter of 2022, which is what we're currently in, because first quarter is January, February, March, second quarter is April, May, June. Now, they do say that there's going to be some price volatility volatility because things can change. It says that actual price outcomes will largely depend on the degree to which existing sanctions imposed in Russia and then any future sanctions and then individual corporate actions affect Russia's oil production or the sale of Russia's oil in the global market. So they're saying uh, the degree to which current oil prices that producers can respond to the high oil prices is going to be important. It says, you know, because if they want to make more money or whatever, the if governments put pressure on them, they said that the macroeconomic developments uh, might have an effect on the global oil demand. And that'll be important for their analysis for the future of the price. But currently, they reduce Russia's oil productions in this month's forecast compared with April's forecast. And they now expect oil markets to be mostly balanced through the second quarter. It says through the end of 2023. And it says, because oil inventories are currently low, we expect downward oil price pressures will be limited and market conditions will exist for significant price volatility. That's a very comp complicated and convoluted way of saying that you're going to continue to pay high prices at the gas pump. That's what that means. They're looking for demand destruction until we get to a level where the average consumer says, I'm going to change my habits. I'm not going to take this vacation. I can't visit my family or friends. Or they're going to carpool and it reduces that demand for fuel. These prices are going to stay here. So here's, here's a report. It's the oil market report from May. And this is from the International uh, Energy Agency. It says some interesting things here. So it says that world oil demand growth is for, forecast to slow to 1.9 million barrels per day in the second quarter from 4.4 million barrels per day. But it also says for 2022 overall, they expect oil demand to increase by 1.8 million barrels per day on an average of use. So this is global use is saying that we use we're going to be using 99.4 million barrels per day. So it's also saying this is something a lot of people don't talk about, the actual oil inventories, because a lot of people say, hey, you know, pump more oil. Well, there's a few things we'll kind of get into that. But they're saying that observed oil inventories declined by a further 45 million barrels during March and are now a total of 1.2 billion barrels lower since June 2020. This simply means that we currently have less supply to put online and to put into the market to reduce those prices. We have a lot less 
than we have. It says here down, down toward, I, I wanted to show you this common theme about demand destruction. It says here, soaring pump prices and slowing economic growth are expected to significantly curb the demand recovery through the remainder of the year and into 2023. So there we go, 2023. Moreover, extended lockdowns across China, where the government struggles to contain the spread of COVID, are driving a significant slowdown in the world's second largest oil consumer. For the year as a whole, global oil demand is forecast to average, once again, 99.4 million barrels per day. But at the end of this, as it says, because China's just now coming out of those lockdowns. So people are going to move around. They're going to want to do things. That's going to put even more pr upward pressure on the price of oil. Expect that to happen because it's going to be more people who are, who are con consuming. And we've already seen when they were locked down that the price was already shot straight up. This reaffirms that. As restrictions in China ease, summer driving picks up and jet fuel continues to recover. World oil demand is set to rise by 3.6 million barrels per day from an April low throughout August. It says if refiners cannot keep pace, product markets and consumers could come under additional strain. Basically, that means that all of us are going to suffer with inflationary pressures and we're going to lose more money out of our pocket and we're going to struggle. That's what that means. Now, I found a good article on CNBC. It's called Rising Fuel Costs Are a Massive Problem for Business and Consumers. Here's why they're so high. So I wanted to explain to you all give you some of the knowledge that was necessary to understand what is causing these increases besides Russia, okay? So even before COVID, energy producers cut back on investment and less profitable projects under pressure from low prices and institutional shareholders demanding higher returns. All that means is that if you go look at the oil charts, oil had this huge run-up going to 2013, 2014. It had this huge crash. As a result of that, Companies were like, well, we've seen what happened before. We don't want to uh, put, put as much money into capital expenditures, which is investing in infrastructure and machinery. And then also those who are investors, so people who buy those shares, said, we don't want you to bring more oil online. We want dividends because we saw what happened last time. It ran up and it crashed and we want something for our investment. So they, they want higher dividend returns. They said producers slashed output further during the throes of the pandemic. Remember, oil went negative when COVID-19 happened. Remember in February, it dropped down, it shut down. When the need for petroleum products fell off a, a cliff, people weren't going anywhere and businesses were shuttered. So far less fuel was needed. Demand dropped so suddenly that WTI crude, the U.S. oil benchmark, briefly traded in negative territory. Now that economies have reopened, manufacturing has revived, that's debatable, and people are driving and flying again, that's that demand, this has led to a surge in demand and an increasingly tight oil market beginning last fall. Now, look at this. Is there any relief in sight? Looking ahead, experts say that demand destruction could be the only thing to quell rising gasoline prices. John Kilduff, partner at Again Capital, said a $5 national average is in the cards for the busy driving season between Memorial Day weekend and the 4th of July. It appears that the national average needs to go higher. Last week, we saw gasoline demand shoot up to what is typically summer type levels. There's more upside here. He, he pointed to two factors spurring the demand besides the, the high prices, pent up demand you keep hearing this pent up demand that people want to get out there and move. They've been locked up or whatever their constraints are for quite a while and a strong labor market because people are unemployed, even though there is a negative on people's wages because inflation is rising faster than people's wages are rising. So that's that's a negative ticker. At the end here. Andy Lipow, president of Lipow Oil Associates, said he believes the national average will peak between $4.60, $4.65. Okay. This other gentleman down here, McNally, said at this point, in order for prices to drop, oil prices, gas prices, it'll take a recession to rein in product inflation. It's not a happy forecast, but gas prices have to go higher 
because there's no real sign of demand capitulation. They will go higher until that ends. That's what it's going to take. Until people have to change their personal habits, their behaviors, their day-to-day activities, because it becomes uncomfortable for them to pay those prices. These prices are going to remain elevated. And currently, from the government agencies, from the international agencies, from the experts out there on Wall Street and in the oil industry, they don't see this demand falling off till 2023. So this should be something that we plan for accordingly, budget accordingly, maybe dollar cost average into fuel every week, pay when you get down to a certain level, carpool, help, you know, help those. But expect this. This is going to continue. It's going to be pain at the pump. Just wanted to share that with you all. I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you very much.